You're watching Morning at NTV. This is Morning at NTV and thank you for making us the number one breakfast show in the country. You know what? 2020 will be a year of big stories and news. The two managers of Uganda's economy, Emmanuel Mutebile and Louis Kasekende, who are governor and deputy governor at the Bank of Uganda, will see their contracts expire. Now there is an ongoing discussion on whether the two who have been in charge of Uganda's monetary policy for decades should get another term. The institution they lead has been beset by scandals from 350 pens that cost over 100 million Uganda shillings to the closure of Crane Bank and the latest where employees were accused of adding additional cargo on currency consumption. Assignments. Two employees of Bank of Uganda were charged with abuse of office before the anti-corruption court and remanded to Luzira prison. This was after they allegedly allowed the inclusion of unauthorized cargo on a chartered plane carrying printed material belonging to the Bank of Uganda. According to the uh, plaintiff, that is Francis Kaketo, a Bank of Uganda branch manager in Mbale and his assistant Fred Vito Wanyama had been assigned by their employer to carry out a pre-shipment inspection of the printed material in France but later allowed the inclusion of unauthorized cargo on a chartered plane. Yes, before I introduce m some of my um, guests this morning, I would like to show you this clip of these two uh, uh, employees at Bank of Uganda who are accused of uh, putting more more consignments on a chartered plane. Let's take a look at that story and I shall return with this bumper. It's nearly a week since police and other security agencies started investigating the Bank of Uganda cargo anomaly. According to government, the bank chartered a plane from France on 27th April this year. It was to deliver 20 pallets containing 350 billion shillings in the 5,000 shillings denomination. However, Bank of Uganda governor wrote to police requesting an investigation after an extra five pallets were added to the consignment. Six people have so far been arrested to help in investigations. On Monday, police spokesperson Fred Nanga said the criminal investigations department which is leading the investigations would like to establish if illegal money entered the country. So with time, we shall get uh, how much was involved, how much has been recovered, what was genuine, and what was the non-official but genuine uh, money. Government spokesperson of Fono Pondo has accused the police spokesperson of making misleading statements. Nanga, who seemed to, see, to suggest that perhaps was quoted out of context and we've asked the police to make good on that statement. Otherwise, if left unclarified, the public will think that actually there was, there is unlawful money in the country. Police decide what they should investigate, not being guided by government or the state. Uh, they have the pointers they, they want to look at. Why would government come in now we, government is not directing police what to do, but certainly miscommunication is possible. And where there is glaring miscommunication, it is important that the government clarifies. Bank of Uganda and the Ministry of Finance have asserted that no money illegally came in. I did not say that there was any currency involved in this, in this uh, private, <coughs> private. Uh, Consignment. Our understanding at this stage is that there was no printed money. What seems to have happened is that the plane was supposed to carry money, but people put in somebody, I don't know who, that's a matter of investigation, put in other organizations, stroke business, things to come in. The Ministry of Health and the UN have dismissed allegations that they had cargo on the plane. It's not clear when the investigations will be concluded or when the suspects will be taken to court. Sudil Biaranga, NTV. Now, in light of such accusations, should the two have their contracts renewed? In studio, we have MP Odongo Oto, who was a witness during the Kosase investigation. Sara Birete, a political analyst and the executive director of the Center for Constitutional Governance, that is Mr. And I also have Mr. Kenneth Nsuga, who is an NRM leaning lawyer and a political analyst. Three of them join me right here in studio. Very good morning, Ms. Birete. I also have Ms. Nsuga, the NRM leaning uh, analyst right there, and Aru County MP Odonga Oto. Let me start with you, Nsuga. The managers of the central bank, 
are retiring. Because second is a contract actually is expiring this year. We are not counting that anymore. Should we be looking at, at the life after Kasekende and Mutebire at Bank of Uganda? Uh, using two words interchangeably, but they mm -hmm. mean two different things. Mm -hmm. You are saying they are retiring, then mm -hmm. you are saying their contracts are expiring. <laughs> okay, Th their contracts are, the, are expiring. The, Kasekende's contract exactly. is expiring this year. year. Mutebire is next year. Next year. Yes. yes. So what are we looking at? Are we looking at life? After Mutabide or Kasekende, are we looking at a succession? Kasekende taking over mm -hmm. from Mutabide. I don't know where the anxiety is coming from. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the governor and the deputy governor mm -hmm. are appointed by the president mm -hmm. uh, after recommendations from relevant institutions. They are given five-year contracts. Mm -hmm. This is known to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, Kasekende was given a contract for five years. It's expiring uh, th uh, th this month. So... Where is anxiety coming? People have contracts. Mm -hmm. Contracts expire. It has, it has ever expired before. Mm -hmm. And it was renewed by the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. So I think Ugandans should have faith in the government mm -hmm. that they voted into power that things are under control. Mm -hmm. If there is a need to renew Mr. Kasekende's, co Kasekende's contract, the appointing authority will do the needful. Mm -hmm. If there are other Ugandans that the president feels are capable mm -hmm of leading the ship at Bank of Uganda, the president will take the necessary action. So we should not have an anxiety over expired contracts, because this is a normal thing. Contracts the, the expire. Anxiety, and, the anxiety, mm. Mr. Subuke, is that mm. uh, these people are appointed at the very, very last end mm. of the term. That mm. means when uh, we hold elections, mm. the new people who are coming in into parliament mm. are too, they're like juniors. They do mm. not have that experience mm. to grill or vet these appointed people mm. in that regard. So that is mm. the only anxiety in that regard. Like the 2016 election, over 300 mm. MPs did not come back. Mm. So imagine that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is a correlation between elections and who is uh, the governor of Bank of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because whoever comes as president in 2021 mm -hmm. will have that duty. It's a constitutional duty. Mm -hmm. uh, though I'm convinced 100% that my candidate, Yoel Kaguta Seven, will come back as the president of this country. Mm -hmm. So. These are normal things that he has mm -hmm. been doing for the last uh, 30 or so years. Mm -hmm. So let Ugandans wait. The contract of Mr. Kasekend has expired. Mm -hmm. If the president wants to renew the contract, according to what Kasekend has done mm -hmm. at Bank of Uganda, he will renew the contract. Mm -hmm. If he feels that he has not served to the expectation of Ugandans, because mm -hmm. all civil servants serve to fulfill the expectations of Ugandans, mm -hmm. then he will appoint another person. Because mm -hmm. I know Uganda is full of talent. We have very many people, very many economists, very many professionals mm -hmm. who can be uh, deputy governor, Bank of Uganda. Yes, Mr. Otto, since 1966, no deputy governor has ever ascended to the topmost position, that is for governor. Do you think this time around, will be, uh, for the first time, we'll be seeing Louis Kasekende becoming the first governor, Bank of Uganda? Well, thank you. That is a good history. Mm -hmm. uh, you are spot on. But I think... Uh, President Museveni is not on planet Mars. He's on Earth. Mm -hmm. And Ugandans are crying foul. We as parliament are crying foul on the conduct of some of these officials of BOU, especially Dr. Louis Kasekende. So if the president is listening, I know they have mechanisms. The public cry out there is a person like Louis Kasekende should not become the governor bank of uganda actually he should be in prison in Luzira prison if the systems were working mm -hmm. as normal mm -hmm. there is a whole kosase a committee of parliament report mm -hmm. that shows how these people grossly mismanage and are currently mismanaging bank of uganda just do a quick spot check the 50,000 denomination shillings is more in circulation than the 1,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Just do a spot check anywhere in the country, even starting with the four of us in the studio here. So, so, so what physical, what, what monetary policy is that? It means money is streaming in into the economy in an uncontrolled manner. Parliament of Uganda established that. For example, Crane Bank had a debt of 90 billion shillings. Uh, Mr. Nsubuga Council, my learned friend. Mm -hmm. In elementary commerce, we were taught in P1, in S4, that Bank of Uganda, I mean the central bank is a lender of last resort. Mm. Crane Bank, for example, needed 90 billion shillings <coughs> to continue operation. It has now to go to the lender of last resort. Mm -hmm. 
But what does the land of last resort do, Bank of Uganda? It did two things that give me sleepless nights. One, it did not give current bank that money. We are saying buy Uganda, build Uganda. This mm -hmm. is an indigenous bank. Mm -hmm. Two, it used 474 billion shillings mm -hmm. to sell Crane Bank that had a debt of 90 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of parliament. We, I'm a member of the budget committee. Mm -hmm. That money left 474 billion to liquidate <laughs> Crane Bank of 90 billion. Mm -hmm. This is unbelievable. And the second thing that gives sleepless nights is Crane Bank was sold on credit to DFCU. They did not even pay the 90 billion shillings. Now, do you, a person like Kaseke, by any stretch of imagination, even the wildest of your dreams, he should not be the governor. He should not be the governor Bank of Uganda. And indeed, the Kosasi report that was tabled in February of 2019 was very, very clear. But why haven't the recommendations of this report been implemented? Why, why, why has the process been so slow? You see, uh, this is where I would agree what with What were the with recommendations, the, first yeah. of all, and why has the implementation process been... The pushed? implementation yes. is the prerogative of the executive, mm -hmm. although and, mm -hmm. the IGG and the DPP can move on their own volition mm -hmm. to have some of these e individuals prosecuted and taken to prison. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, you are talking about those who are in control of one trillion shillings illicit money. The IGG may not have capacity to investigate them. The DPP may not have the capacity to investigate them. Mm -hmm. The person who has the capacity, as of now, is the president. Mm -hmm. So this is the time we are calling the president. Fighting corruption is not about walking from Natete <laughs> to here. Mm -hmm. It is now zeroing down on these individuals. And Ugandans mm -hmm. are watching. Mm -hmm. We are glad recently Minister Sambi Tangaro is in prison. So this is the time we want to see individuals like Kasekende being charged. And this one, we need the State House mm -hmm. Corruption Department. Mm -hmm. Other arms of government are weak. Mm -hmm. They can just give one billion shillings and someone earning 300,000 shillings would, would say the, 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 what is on the file is not enough for evidence. Mm -hmm. So this is the year we expect to see MOOC professors coming to, press, to replace Mutebile. This is the year we want to see Dr. Kasekenda out of BOU and uh, probably being arraigned before court. These are some of the things we call walking the talk in, 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 fighting, in, 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 in fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and um, Dugu Moderator, if you are bringing money into the country, yes. then along the way we hear that glue, glue, mm -hmm. someone had a consignment of glue to be loaded together with money. Walai, what kind of glue do you go to buy from France? We need oversight. Eh? Sarah Bireta is also a political analyst. Please, pitch in, pitch in on this uh, very important issue. Do you think Amisom Tabire and Kasekende are the only people we have in this country that can steer Bank of Uganda or this country's economy in the right direction? Tabire has been governor since 2001. Mm -hmm. He has served four terms. I think that even since under I, human, since I was an MP. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> under any human capacities, I think he has exhausted himself. Mm -hmm. But also it's under his regime that we have seen a collapse of all local banks. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, instigated mm -hmm. by his staff. Mm -hmm. Under his supervision, mm -hmm. under his watch. Mm -hmm. As much as we blame Kaseke and I don't think it's Kaseke and alone. The head of Bank of Uganda is Governor Mtewiri. Mm -hmm. He's also the head, the board chair, unfortunately. A role that the Constitution created under Article 161 that, create, that provides for no oversight. Mm -hmm. The same head of the executive is the head of oversight. Mm -hmm. He makes budgets, he makes plans, and approves himself together with his deputy. I think that was a very big mistake under the constitutional making process, and Article 161 should be amended. I'm glad that Honorable Mawanda moved that, was given a go ahead to move mm -hmm. that private member's bill after the failure mm -hmm. of government and the 90 days given for government to act on Kosasi reports. Okay. So I think it's time for the two gentlemen to quit mm -hmm. and other things can be done, but they don't have time. Do you More agree with uh, some uh, analysts who's, who think that the two should be personally held account accountable for these candles? Of course, under any accountability procedures and, uh, and under any country that is governed under rule of law. Mm. People should be held for the actions. Wow. 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 Yeah. 
Mr. Nsubuka, yes, so many allegations. Mm. We should hold Mr. Kasekende and Mutebire mm. to that card. Mm. What do you think? Absolutely, because uh, <laughs> this country, the, the, the reason why I love it so much and the reason why I believe in the NRM government, uh, we have the rule of law. Mm -hmm. We have institutions. If somebody has committed a crime, whoever you are, you are prosecuted. Mm -hmm. So if there is evidence, mm -hmm. investigations are complete. If somebody has committed a crime, arraign him before court, mm -hmm. let him take plea, let him <laughs> provide his defense. If a judge is <laughs> presiding over the case, finds him guilty, you can't serve the sentence. Mm -hmm. We've seen very many people going to Luzida to serve sentences, the Jamoas, the waivers. Mm -hmm. So, like he said, uh, Vitangal was recently arraigned, then he was remanded. So, mm -hmm. this is the bit about this country. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, Mr. Kaseke and they, if uh, Mr. Mtevide have committed mm -hmm. any crimes, mm -hmm. and that is a big if, mm -hmm. they will be prosecuted. But me, I want Ugandans to have faith in the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. He has been doing this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. He knows these contracts are coming up. There are uh, maybe people in the pipeline, probably has seen that these people have served. Mm -hmm. So let's not be over anxious. Let's give him benefit of doubt to do his mm -hmm. uh, constitutional mandate and his discretion, and Ugandans will wait his decision, mm -hmm. then we can start debating mm -hmm. after the decision has been made. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, Ms. Otto, recently Dr. Ezra Suruma did say that some leaders in the central bank do not put the interests of Ugandans first, but those of foreign banks. Do you agree with, with that assessment? I, I agree. Uh, judging, for example, from the sale of uh, Crane Bank, mm. you know DFCU is uh, close to 80% mm. owned by foreigners. Specifically, there are people from, from Scandinavia, mm -hmm. I think from uh, Norway, mm -hmm. they are the major shareholders. Now, you sell a bank, because now the only indigenous bank remaining is Centenary Bank. Mm -hmm. Whether Housing Finance, DFCU, uh, ABSA, all the other banks are foreign owned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For every money you borrow from all the other banks, you are making people in New York richer. Mm. That is why Ugandan should now be encouraged to borrow money from circles, from microfinance, and from local banks. That is what we, if, if, that is what we call patriotism. Mm. You don't have to go to patriotism classes. Actually, in some countries like Nigeria, mm. they have even gone a step ahead of na nationalizing certain lucrative investments which are owned by foreigners mm. to, to keep the money in the country. So, so it is true, I agree, and the answer is in the affirmative, that there are some individuals in Banka of Uganda that put personal interest mm. ahead of national interest. They look at who is going to give them a bigger cut. For example, in the liquidation of Crane Bank, mm. actually BOU could have run Crane Bank for, 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 for even five years mm. and put a management team and then they regurgitate it and then we have an indigenous bank employing millions of Ugandans proceeding. But they took the easier option of saying, uh, Crane Bank has a financial problem of 80 billion. Give us 50 billion shillings in cash as commission, and then we shall allow you to pay the 80 billion over four years. Mm -hmm. The actual money that was actually given in the sale of Crane Bank is less than 30 billion. Mm -hmm. I, I personally tendered in evidence to show that those individuals like Kasekende mm. are rich. I went to Ministry of Lands. I did a search. Mm. I attended 61 land titles mm. stamped by Ministry of Land. Mr. This Otto, is, let's not yes. get too personal. Let's no, what I'm trying to say, it, it's not personal, but yes. what I'm trying to say, I attended before Kosase yes. Committee, mm. 61 land yes. titles owned by individuals and companies. And 13 of so them this, for this, Kasekende were yeah, approved. Yeah, this, this is Stamped by Minister of Land, this is a government department. Mm -hmm. So these are clear indicators that uh, uh, there is conflict of interest. I've been in Parliament for 19 years. I have only one building in Kampala, and that's where I sleep. So the writings on the wall is clear. There is nothing uh, personal. I know some of them mm -hmm. are professionals. Mm -hmm. They do World Bank consultancy. Mm -hmm. They make money from abroad. I don't rule out that. Mm -hmm. Kasekende is a PhD. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say in the interest of Ugandans, yes. we need something solid. This time from President Museveni, solid. Mm -hmm. This is a member of opposition. And talking. you did talk about the president. Yeah. Let me let me uh, engage Miss Sarah.
the president, if the president is serious about beating corruption, if he's serious with all these anti-corruption works, and then he comes out and gives uh, Mutevide and Kasekende another contract, what would that entail? I think it would be a clear indicator to mm. Ugandans mm. that the mm. president has nothing to do with fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. If you read the Matende's book, The Struggle for Democracy, I think mm -hmm. it was voted among the best books of the year. Mm -hmm. You get the details of how she was fought when she thought she was fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. Even the people that were pardoned mm -hmm. and, and the rest of the details that happened all by the president. Mm -hmm. Walking, you know, Honare Boto talked about walking the talk. But I think for the president it's the reverse. He talks the walk. Wow. <laughs> he does not. He cannot. <laughs> I don't think President Museveni is capable of fighting corruption. You're being excited. Mr. as we wrap up, do you think the president has the capacity to do you, away you with see, the corruption it, it, that has eaten it, the Bank of Uganda to the core? In my language, you have a saying, if they are going to slaughter a cow, you don't start negotiating and debating whether it has a calf or not. Mm -hmm. You wait, they slaughter it, mm -hmm. then you witness with your own eyes. The, years. the contracts <laughs> <laughs> are expiring. Yeah. The president is still in control. Let's us give him an opportunity to make a decision. But Mason, so Once he makes a decision, then we shall come the, and debate. The main area of contention is mm, that if mm. the president is so focused on beating corruption and mm. then he gives these two mm. a contract again, mm. it will only entail that he's mm. not so serious about corruption. Mm. What do you make of that? But statement? you see, the president does not rely on what Nsoboga says here, what Honorable says here, mm. and what she says here. Mm -hmm. The president, uh, as the fountain of honor, has resources at his disposal. There's a committee report. He has mm. a committee report. He does his own investigations. He has instructions to help him make decisions. So I'm confident, mm -hmm. like he has been doing before, mm -hmm. that uh, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni will make the right decision for mm -hmm. the good of this country. Mr. Otto, we are going to link to Stephen Bide. In a nutshell, what can we do to navigate this debacle? Well, if President Museveni reappoints Kasegen, I don't have so much problem with Mutebule. Mm -hmm. Mutebule. Mm. He's old, mm -hmm. he's, he's played his role, yeah? mm -hmm. he's the orange light at the traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the red light at that jam, the Dr. Kasekende, if President Museveni reappoints them, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. uh, it, would be, it would be nothing wrong with also making fake money. Mm -hmm. Because so people in control are I doing wrong things. So mm -hmm. also people outside should now find <laughs> ways of making money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have anarchy in the financial mm -hmm. system. So that any solutions? I think the solution... Mm. Actually, when most MPs were debating Kosase report, they called for the resignation mm. of mm. the Bank of Uganda bosses. Mm. I think the best solution mm. would have been resignation. Resignation. Yes, Self but now course. that their contracts are out, they need to leave Uganda alone. But I think went. They need to leave Ugandans <laughs> alone. <laughs> Why don't it's a very contentious, <laughs> very, very contentious conversation we are having with Odongo Tol, Sarabirete, and Suguga right here. We have been talking about the chaos right there, the HR problem <laughs> at the central bank, that is Bank of Uganda. But right about now, we are going to veer away from that conversation and talk about the campaigns as they are. They are upon us. We have, uh, you have the primaries in April. A little bit later on, you have the campaigns around August. So it's the campaign year that I'm looking at. So, the 2021 election campaign has only one game changer, and that is Robert Chagulanyi, the Chadondo East MP. Now, he has been in parliament barely a year <laughs> since he was elected, but his influence in politics has been felt in Jinja, Bujiri, and Arua municipality. But for those who observe politics more closely, it is all... It is now known as the Bobby Wine effect. Before I bring in my analysts, let me show you this video in Asha 